welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, 20 times world champion George Digweed fights his way through the crowds at the British Shooting Show last weekend to show you the best kit on offer. UK Sport has given shooters hundreds of thousands of pounds in advance of Rio 2016 and it's mainly thanks to one man. It's Olympic gold medalist and double trap world record holder Peter Wilson. First, no ordinary night vision. It's a bad time to be a fox when Roy Lupton and his buddies have found a way of turning night literally into day. Over the past few weeks, we've brought you all sorts of night vision footage, ranging from the awful to the it has potential to the not off bad. Roy was responsible for the first lot of NV, with Crow picking up the baton for a night of quality ratting. Now Roy has called in the big guns and is expecting infrared envy from all over the world. After my last attempt of uh, night vision and we got those blurry images of the rats and uh, I got um, severely berated by uh, Crow, I decided that uh, we'd call in the big guns. So uh, hopefully we're going to outdo you on this one Andy. And um, I've called in a very good friend of mine Darren and uh, he's a, a very clever chap when it comes to night vision. and. Uh, setting things up so uh, we should get some absolutely stunning footage so do you want to just uh, talk us through what we've got set up on here then yeah very simple setup tonight we're using the new canon xf100 um, prosumer camcorder which is absolutely excellent in night vision mode and two bosch youth led illuminators so we should get some hd foot footage out to 300 yards plus um, it's all powered by a deep and lithium-ion battery um, so it keeps it all nice and compact and lightweight and uh, hopefully Davey's going to have some fun operating a new camera tonight. And on top of the rifles we're going we're to be using? One of my home built night visions, um, just nice simple home built night vision. And, uh, um, and again that, that's just from a, a CCTV camera? CCTV camera, yep, and the Nightmaster 800 infrared torch. Excellent um, sir. And so what, what do you reckon the, the footage that we should get through our, our scopes? I mean what sort of distance do you reckon we should be able to get? E easily we're going to get 200 yards. Yep, uh, super. Obviously the aim is tonight to try and call them in as close as possible to try and get some, some decent nighttime footage. Excellent stuff. Well, I've been looking forward to this for a long time. So uh, I'm definitely looking forward to uh, have my own back with Andy. So uh, we're going to get out there and see what we can do. This fantastic setup really does turn the darkness into light, offering hundreds of yards of crystal clear vision. The industrial strength IR CCTV spotlights sitting either side of the camera are usually found around prison walls or building sites, so it's no wonder it's offering us a chance to see into a whole new world. Tonight's footage isn't only being supplied by the night vision camera, we're also getting footage through the scope, that is if Roy doesn't make too much noise getting it set up. It's not easy keeping quiet with leads, screens and rifles in a snug Argo. With a Fox Pro 40 yards in front of us, the fun begins. For the first time ever, David on the camera is the one spotting the foxes and directing the shooter in. Two appear behind us. It's awkward for Roy to get into position, plus they're close to the horizon, so no safe backstop. For now, it is great just being able to watch them. Unfortunately, the fox has come in behind us, which is the worst possible position we could have had, because he's now sitting on the horizon. It's probably picked up our wind. There's a little breeze blowing towards it, and it's just sitting there having a look. I'm hoping it might just go around. Then another appears in front and to our right. Darren is in the better position than Roy and takes his chance. Not only is the NV rig good for spotting them, it's good at finding them too. Let's slip back into normal vision for a quick chat with Roy. Well, that was brilliant, wasn't it? We had the fox come in from behind us and she was just sitting right on the horizon so we just couldn't uh, do anything with her. And just as we scanned around, another fox started to come in through the bracken and was making its way around on the caller. And again, really interesting because we were, we were obviously sitting back and we just watched the fox working all the way around the caller. So again, just trying to work the wind, even though it was only a, a very light rodent distress that we were using, still working all the way around. And I think we got some footage actually of it sort of scanning back and forth, still not 100% whether or not they wanted to commit. And it was still a good 80 yards out from the call. And where I was, I couldn't get back into the Argo without making a lot of noise. And so I passed the rifle over to Darren and uh, he made a fantastic shot on it and uh, we got our first one of the evening. So what I'd like to do now is just try and carry on 
especially whilst we've got, uh, got this kit, um, try for another two or three and just see if we can get some really good results of the foxes coming right into us. It's a great start and we can't wait to get into another part of the estate. This fox doesn't want to come any closer and Roy isn't happy with the shot here either. We have a quick pit stop and then we're onto some fresh ground. We don't have time to set the call out this time and just make do with some hand calls. At 90 yards it's a straightforward shot for Roy. Second fox of the evening. Well the size of it I would say a vixen. Let's have a look. Yep. So that was probably the vixen that was calling a bit earlier. So very, very pretty little fox that one. Excellent. Second one in the bag. And as we were coming down here, there was another fox just up to the left, but we didn't have a chance to call or anything like that. But uh, we just decided to shoot this one as we were coming down. We'll go up the top, set the caller up and uh, see if we can get the other one to come in. Darren sets up the Fox Pro on a stick for this next stop and we back up into a good position. The rodent distress call has an immediate effect. The wide angle of vision means Roy can be guided in. The foxes can't see us, but they can hear us. This one looks at the call, then us, then back again. Next we get a different type of customer. We spot a cat at the edge of the field that's making straight for the call. Without hesitation it gets to within a few feet and stops. The original two foxes are still loitering in the undergrowth. After five minutes, one makes a move. It makes sure the cat knows who is boss. Roy has him in the scope, but not one up the spout. Looks like this Charlie is in luck until he gets reacquainted with the cat. Squeezed the trigger when I was smack on the fox and um, unfortunately it went click and nothing happened. And luckily she just ran down a little bit and stopped and we managed to take the shot. So number three in the bag. Uh, Do you know why she stopped? Sorry? Do you know why she stopped? No, I've got no idea why she stopped. Because she nearly bumped into the cat. Oh, did she? <laughs> With the sleet coming down hard and the batteries running low, we're on our last fox of the evening. We tried to get it in close, possibly sacrificing the chance of a shot. With some perseverance, it eventually gets itself into a clear position and Roy has fox number four of the evening. The technology opens up a whole new world and makes Roy appreciate just how many foxes are on this ground. If you didn't get a flash of the eyes, you'd never know. Unfortunately, rain stopped play. We were going to carry on and uh, see if we could go into the wee hours and see how many we could account for because the way we were going, even though we were uh, just getting used to the kit and making a, a few balls up this along the way and uh, a little bit too much noise, we were still getting them in. And uh, you know, we started to get some really, really good reactions and hopefully some fantastic footage. But with this going and with some very expensive kit, we didn't want to get it too wet. So uh, that really just leaves me to say thank you very much for Darren to bringing all your kit down. That was absolutely superb, mate. Thank, thank you very much. Pleasure. That was, uh, yeah, I mean, the results we got on that were well, phenomenal. And uh, I mean, especially that, that um, or the vixen that came in with the cat. That was just brilliant, wasn't it? Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> but yeah, fantastic night. And uh, thank you very much for coming down and showing us all your toys. We'll do it on a dry night. Have a good night. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Roy's pretty chuffed with his efforts, and we don't think Andy will have an answer unless, of course, he gets Zeiss to lend him their military truck, which spotted this mouse getting run over by a plane at half a kilometre. Yes, maybe that's the answer. Now, shedding light on events from around the world, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Britain News. The baby who lost a finger in a fox attack in South London is recovering well after surgeons sewed the finger back on again. London Mayor Boris Johnson is holding talks with council leaders 
to discuss what he calls the growing menace of urban foxes. The fox entered the home through a back door and had been trying to drag baby Denny Dolan out of the house when the child's mother kicked it and it ran away. To highlight the dangers of feeding foxes and making them lose their natural fear of humans, we ran this film of a fox grabbing a dead piglet dressed in a baby grow. It's sitting in a buggy with a recording of a baby crying in the background. It sounds remarkably like a distress call. Click on the link to watch the film. Meanwhile, a hospital unit has taken the step of putting up a fox alert poster. It's in response to a Charlie being spotted in the maternity wing's main lobby of Manchester's Withenshaw Hospital. The British shooting show appears to have been good for both punters and traders. Gunsdirect.co.uk, which is a new website where people can buy and sell guns and sporting days, had a very successful weekend. The site, which was set up by shooters for shooters, provides a cost-effective way of reaching the right people. Aimed at the trade as well as the general consumer, it's easy to use and is designed to deliver good service and value for money. A 65-year-old Scottish gamekeeper has been cleared of illegal snaring after what's been nearly four years of legal proceedings. The court in Scotland found David Taylor not guilty. He's been a gamekeeper on the Purdy Conservation Award-winning Loch in Dorb estate for 50 years. Following a trial at Inverness Sheriff Court, Sheriff Ian Abercrombie has ruled the snares were set legally and at the correct height and locations. And finally, the science is in. Fish do not feel pain. Anglers, back to your odds. Animal rights people, reel it in. A team of seven scientists at the University of Wyoming conducted extensive research to determine if fish have either the receptors or the neocortex part of the brain to feel pain. They don't. Instead, scientists say fish demonstrate an unconscious reaction to being hooked. Meanwhile, researchers in Japan have found ways of watching fish think in real time. You are watching a zebrafish contemplating a single cell creature swimming around it. You can tell it's thinking because different parts of the brain are flashing. You are now up to date with Field Sports Britain News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Well, from one heartthrob to another, Peter Wilson is the subject of this week's Taylor's Travels. This week, Taylor's Travels meets Hello! magazine. I'm visiting Olympic shooter Peter Wilson at his home in Dorset. The dad moment was one of the most memorable that the Olympics produced. And here is that dad. Definitely a dad moment because dad and mum, I mean, just because mum wasn't there, I think it was dad was a little quicker. Mum's knees didn't quite manage to make it down the, those, those uh, flights of stairs. It was, it's very special to share that moment with your parents and it uh, just happened that dad was there first and it was great to be able to give him a hug. And of course, I wouldn't want to do it again on national TV if I could help it because everyone remembers that moment. And I think dad is in fact a great deal more famous than I am uh, because of it. But he's, a, he's an integral part of my journey and, uh, and without him I, I wouldn't be where I am today. And, and, and so it was great to be able to give him a hug and, and thank him. I didn't do anything, I just helped him fulfill his ambition. It was him who decided that that was what he wanted to do. And at the time it seemed like a very far-fetched dream. But to his internal credit, he made it happen. Uh, with the help of Ahmed Al Maktoum. I think without him, he would never have gotten where he did. Since the Olympics, Peter has been showered with sponsorship opportunities. He has carefully chosen quality British merchandise. Here he is shooting the new Holland & Holland Sporter. It is, a, it is a real thing of beauty. I've never held such a, a beautiful gun in my life, so I, I do feel like I'm, I'm really privileged. I'm holding a piece of history. That's what's really nice about it. I've never, I've never felt so proud to hold a gun before. All the guns I've ever used have been real tools of the trade. You know, they've, they've been a tool, they've never been cleaned, they've never been looked after. I shoot them every single day. And this, this is a little different. This is, this is beautiful. So, um, as I said, I actually feel 
it's quite nice. It's, it's, it's just sort of makes you smile when you hold it. The gun that you used in the Olympics, you won the gold with, what's happened to that? that it's at home. It's, it's actually got a golf for service. Yeah, every year it gets serviced. In fact, it gets serviced twice a year. It gets a, a pretty, pretty big battering. It's fairly heavily used. In fact, I shoot anywhere up to about 60,000 cartridges a year through it. Peter and Holland and Holland are both at the top end of shooting. What does it take to join the bottom end? I don't think there's any, any need to worry about becoming a professional clay pigeon shot. I think all that matters is, is enjoying the sport and what, what, it, what it has to offer. So, you know, be safe uh, and have an amazing, amazing time and just get involved. Get involved and, and have as much fun as you possibly can. Keep smiling because it is the most incredible sport and it can offer so much. So, you know, immerse yourself in it. As I said, of course, be safe and, and, and have fun. Shooting is one part of country life and hunting is another. The Wilsons live in the heart of the South Dorset hunt. Since the weather is closing in, Pete's girlfriend Michelle decides that now's a good time to watch the hunt in action. To start with, we can't find them. A few calls and a few wrong directions later, we reckon we know where they are. At the top of the hill, we're in the perfect place. What's the weather like? Horrendous! <laughs> As well as Dad, or Dad, as he is now known, and Mum, Pete's other great rock is his girlfriend, the sporting artist, Michelle McCulloch. Yeah, no, I've been shooting and I've had a go, but I haven't succeeded in actually doing very well at the moment. But I, I, I enjoy doing the clay pigeon shooting. I, I've quite enjoyed that and I've been coached by the best. <laughs> but only, I've only been out a few times and, and I, I do enjoy I love beating, so I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy doing that. Yeah, yeah, I love getting involved and being outside and going through countryside that I wouldn't necessarily go through. Pete is not just the golden boy of shooting. <laughs> He's an ambassador for all country sports. Winning the Olympics in London was just amazing, you know, but um, being able to shoot a pigeon and, and, or even a brace and just come home and, and uh, dress them and cook them is it's just as exciting, but in a very different way. So uh, I'm very fortunate that at the age of 26, I, I, I have won the Olympic Games in London. And, uh, and I'm also fortunate enough to be able to come back here to Dorset uh, and uh, be given the option to go out and shoot the odd pigeon or two and, and uh, cook it in an evening. So um, I, I know it sounds so simple, so basic, so, so sort of um, prehistoric, but it is, it's just wonderful. It's a, it's a wonderful thing and I'm very, very lucky. I don't ever want to take it for granted. On behalf of the Countryside Alliance, we ask him to make this appeal. My name is Peter Wilson and I'm really looking forward to the National Shooting Week between the 25th of May and 2nd of June. Thank you, Pete. For more information, visit countrysidealliance.org. If you want to see more of the films we've made with the Countryside Alliance, please click on the screen that's just appeared up there in the sky behind me. Now, George Digweed has a taste for shooting kit. He takes us to the British Shooting Show. Finally, a field sports event that doesn't give a stuff about the weather. The British Shooting Show heralds the start of what will be an exciting 2013 for shooting sports. And the place is rammed, at times too busy. But there's some good business being done to fill the gap created by the downpours of last year. We spot a couple of our YouTube pals in the crowds and ask them about the show. The general feeling seems to be that life is good in the British countryside. It's heartwarming to see this many people in the industry. I think when you go shooting, you go to the gun shop, you buy your kit, and then you go to the field and you're out there on your own or maybe with a shooting buddy, and you do kind of feel um, that you're on your own in the sport. But when you're out, you know, you come to an event like this, you realise you're one of many. If you're interested in shooting sports, that'll be here. Target, hunting, whatever discipline. Are you going to open that mock filled wallet today? It might. If you see a cloud of dust in the horizon, it's me deciding to spend money on something. The event covers all shooting sports, from air rifles for a few hundred quid right up to the Exotica. And it also attracts some familiar faces from the shooting world, like our own Crowman, who is always happy to stop for a chat. As is Mr George Digweed, who, when not having snaps taken with fans, is keen to create mischief. Last time I'm ever going to speak to you, ever. Sometimes if he goes out with... Mark Gilchrist didn't get up to 12. Can't believe a word he says, I'll tell this you. This is Andy Crow. 
Andy. Star of State Screen and one of the shooting magazines. Oh, no, no, no. No, this Sporting Shooter. Yes, that's what I said. Look, in fact, you've got their three subscribers all stood there at the moment. <laughs> Where is Don? Can you move them along, please? No one is safe from the 20 times world champion. If you're looking for a name to the face, it's Charlie Jacoby, Field Sports TV. To be honest with you, I don't know why Team Wild have got security on their stand. I mean, really and truly, he should have been flanked all the way around here. Are you over 14 or over 17? Sorry, we'll what go scope? 17. Um, that no. is going to come out. That <laughs> no. rock is going to come out. No. You've no. completely excuse blown that. Now. Excuse me, excuse me. That's a given. All right, I hope you got that. So that's a given. Right, now come back to where we said. And they'll be abused by you. I can be abused by far better people than you. A great time is had by all at a good spirited event. Even though I didn't get to the shooting show this year myself because I was in Wales that Saturday filming the, uh, well, yeah, uh, filming the rugby fox hunting. Honest, watch it next week. This week, by all accounts, the shooting show was a blast. From Britain to the world, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting, shooting and fishing videos that YouTube has to offer. We start this week with the definitive pigeon shooting film. It's by Basque Films. The wood pigeon is the UK's number one agricultural pest and causes millions of pounds of damage to agricultural crops every year. Pigeon shooting expert Will Garfit introduces the art of shooting over decoys in Pigeon Shooting, an introduction. Sam Badham sends me his latest video, Rough Shooting in Snow. As they were snowed in and his buddy Tom owns a 4x4 or two they thought they'd do some rough shooting. They found strategic locations and kept the pigeons flying backwards and forwards between them. Now here is a natural history film, but not like you see on the BBC. Some of it is filmed upside down as Tweeds and Pheasants tries to press his mobile phone camera to his binoculars while out walking in Gloucestershire last August. It's a family of foxes that got pretty close. He admits there is no shooting involved but says he thinks Roy and the rest of Field Sports Channel might like to see it. And he's right. On to fishing and the scourge of the non-Scot, Andy Richardson teams up with Greg Tom Thompson for the River Dee opening and some top-level salmon fishing. Fish are caught. Dragon of the East Blue sends in a slightly different fishing film. He says that Canada, where he lives, enjoys several programmes dedicated to fishing and hunting, and in his opinion, the number one is The Fish and Canada Show. They have been gay since 1987 and also run a radio show. Here is their latest. Adam Reese of SilverthornGumdogs.com so loves Field Sports Channel's shows, he says, that he decided to have a go himself. Here is a small film he made of one of his springers, showing a bit of training on a blind retrieve and a bit of water up shooting. Forgive the garish blaze orange vest, he adds. It's the law here. And here is Western Pennsylvania, USA. More recommendations pour in for Edgun USA, the grand panjandrum of air gunning videos on YouTube. This one is Spiraling Pellets, nemesis of air rifle accuracy, contains hunting, which highlights the horror of wobbly pellets. Finally, we're in Hungary for a wild boar drive. It's everything you would hope. Wild boar driven. You can click on any of these films to watch them. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. If you want to go back over our older hunting YouTubes, you can click on the screen up there. If you want to watch our new series, Schools Challenge TV, again, it's appearing in the sky behind me. This has been Field Sports Britain. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button that I think we'll put here this week or go to our webpage fieldsportschannel.tv just here and click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter or scroll down to the bottom and pop your email address into the constant contact box or go and have a look at our newsletter click here this has been Field Sports Britain <laughs>